Well, hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making some reusable bag closures. Well, there always seems to be a problem when it comes to using products that are in bags that you can't seal up if they're not resealable. Things go stale, things go bad, that sort of thing. Um, but there's really not a good way to seal them up. Well, there is, but we're going to get to that. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a solution that you can use and that you can make in your shop to seal up those bags. They're reusable, they're fun to make, they're easy to make. I'm going to show you several different methods of how to make them and it all starts with a bit of layout. So let's head over to the bench. Well, for years, our bags from the supermarket, being bread bags, buns, that sort of thing, they were closed with these. Um, a plastic little clip device that held the bags closed. They worked rather well for many years. They were reusable. You could put them on a different bag if you want, and they would last through the entire time. And then at some point in time, someone decided that these Plastic closures were a menace to society, but the bags they came in are not, I guess. I don't know. But they got rid of these, and then they made these paper ones. Very thin cardboard, um, very flimsy. And guys, other than the Canadian Prime Minister, these are the most useless things on the face of the earth. So they're horrible. You put them in your freezer, if they get any kind of moisture, they crumble, they don't hold the bread properly. You find them on the floor more often than you find them on the bag. But today we're gonna to come up with a solution for this and I'm gonna show you how to make reusable, environmentally friendly bag closures that you can whip off in seconds with scrap wood and, uh, and use them to your heart's content. So let's get started with the layout. Now, because we'll be making multiples of these, I'm going to make a template. So I have some quarter inch hardboard here. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to mark out the outer perimeter of our um, bag closures. So we will place a line at one and a half inches up from the bottom and then two inches in from the edge. One and a half by two inches is the dimension of our clips. Now what we're going to do is half an inch in, we're going to place a mark. Then we're going to place a mark at three quarter. Then a half an inch over from that, we'll place another line. And then another quarter inch over, we'll place our fourth line. At this point, in between our quarter inch wide spaces here, we're just going to place a center line. It doesn't have to be perfect but we want some kind of guideline here because we're going to be using a circle template to mark out a circle <laughs> at the top. So what we're going to do now is place a line at seven eighths of an inch across from the bottom. And that will be the center of the circle that we want to put. Now I kind of messed up and put a, an extra line across the top there. Just ignore that. We're now going to take a half inch circle template. We're going to place it centered here on the center line that we drew in between our quarter inch wide spaces and the center line here that we drew at seven eighths of an inch up from the bottom. And we're going to mark out a half inch diameter circle at both of those locations. And now using a seven eighths diameter circle template, we are going to round off all four of these corners. There we go. And that is it. So let me just give you a closer look at this so you can see what it looks like. I know there might be a little bit of a glare there uh, on the filming, but this is what we're looking at for our design. So the very first thing we want to do, this is a template. So the very first thing we want to do is right here in that center, we're going to center punch this and we're going to drill those two half inch holes. 
And at this point, we're going to take this over to the scroll saw. We're going to cut out these two quarter inch wide lines here, or spaces, and we're going to cut around the perimeter. And once you get that done, that is your template. Now guys, I have a piece of 1 8 inch thick plywood. It's kind of just a crafting plywood and I have cut it to be two inches by an inch and a half. So all I'm going to do is we're going to place our template on top of our blank here. And we're going to mark out our bag closure all the way around uh, to get it marked out on our piece. All right, just like that. Guys, cutting these out could not be simpler. And I'm gonna show you four different methods here of how you can do it, and hopefully one of them is going to match with your tools. So this one here, we're gonna do on the scroll saw. So we'll just put SS for scroll saw. We're gonna mark out another one. This will be on the band saw. And this one here will be hand tools. And this one here, well, you know what? I'm gonna show you that one when we get these three finished. So for all three of our methods here, with the exception of the scroll saw here, um, with the scroll saw, you can just cut around the perimeter of all of these lines without an issue and be done with it. A little bit of sanding and you'll be done. So you know what, let me start with that. Let me get this one cut. And in a very short period of time, you have that done. Uh, the only tool that was used is the scroll saw. So for our next one here, which is the band saw, the very first thing we're going to do is just roughly here, we're going to mark the centers of our half inch holes. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we're gonna drill those out over at the drill press. And the next step that we're going to do here is using the bandsaw, we're going to cut out our slots. And then to keep it super simple, we're just going to do our roundovers on the corner over at the belt sander. And there is our bandsaw. Not perfect, not exactly like the scroll saw, but both of them close enough to our original that they will function just fine. So let's do our hand tool method. And uh, this one is quite possibly the most simple. So let's get that going. Well, first things first, we're going to drill our half inch diameter holes using an egg beater style drill. Now obviously underneath I have a board to protect my bench so I have one of the scraps. So there we go, there's our half inch holes drilled. Now we need to cut our slots. And for that we have a fine cross cut gent saw. That. There's one slot, and there's our second one. And the very last step to do is we're just going to round off these corners. So just with a fine file, we're going to carefully round them all off. Okay, 
And that's that one done. So let's head over and compare the three so far. And there they are. Guys, can you tell the difference with the way that they were made according to how they look? Probably not. Um, I can't even do it. This one was hand tools. This one here was the band saw. And this one here was the scroll saw. All three look exactly the same pretty much and all three of them function exactly the same. But regardless of what method you use, I said I was going to give you a fourth. And the fourth one is by far, so far anyway, one of my favorites to use only because it is super quick and you're able to make a kajillion of these uh, at one time. And that is laser cutting them. Guys, I put these through my X-Tool laser and uh, made up a quick file on Lightburn using the exact same dimensions that I gave you to make this template and just basically said, here, go ahead, man, do it. And the laser fired these off in about a minute and a half. So we've got four of them there for use, all identical, all exact. So why plywood? Why are we using 1 8 inch plywood? Well, guys, I want to show you. These are ones that I made. This is walnut. Now, walnut is a strong wood. It's a hardwood. The problem is because of this design, plywood's grain structure alternates. It alternates this way. The next ply goes this way. The next ply goes this way. That's the nature of plywood. That's what makes it stable. That's what makes it strong. <sighs> Solid wood doesn't do that. So here we've got the grain going up and down and this one here, as you can see, the weak point is here in these thin areas. And if you put any kind of flex or any kind of pressure on it, you're going to snap it along the grain. Same thing with this one here. The weak points, because the grain is going this way on this one, the weak points are here. And again, any little flexing will snap the parts off of this like there is no tomorrow. It just has zero strength. You'll break them within the first couple times of using them. Plywood, not so much. So, plywood is your best bet here, unless you want to glue up your own plywood using hardwoods. That could be kind of cool too. You can make them a little thicker, maybe 1 16th inch strips and glue them together, um, alternating the grains to make your own ply or your own plywood uh, and essentially getting a hardwood clip. But guys, how do you use these? Well, let me show you. This is the best part. Well, I've got a bag here from a loaf of bread. The bread was empty, but I put some scraps of wood just to give us something to close up. I guess, well, yeah, either way, if you eat it, you get your fiber, right? <laughs> okay, so all you do is just pretend there's bread in here. So we'll just spin this, and then you take one of your clips, your bag goes through the clip, and then into here, and that's it. That now holds in place. It holds your stuff inside, it's closed there, and the twisting of it there, it's not airtight, but neither were the other ones. So there's one way to use them. So these are versatile another way, and that is if you have chip bags. So here we just have a bag of tortilla chips, and I mean, what do you do with them? You're not gonna eat this whole bag in one sitting. So all you need to do, Take the air out of it. We're just going to flatten this out here. Hold it over several times to get down to the level of the chips, just like that. Take one of your clips onto one side and then onto the other. Can you see how I'm doing that? And then push it down. And again, It holds it and this here actually with the folds is fairly airtight. I tested it with other uh, chip clips that go on the bag and I could squeeze that bag and allow air to escape out the top. This one here when I squeeze it, see how it's expanding there and pushing the clip off? Just like that. That's because the air can't escape. It's 
trying to, but instead it's expanding everything as it goes. So there you go, a second use for that is on chip bags. Guys, paper lunch bags, uh, the chip bags, the bags of bread or buns or produce. You can't go wrong with these and they take seconds, literally seconds to make. And there you have it. Reusable bag ties. Guys, if you are frustrated with the new system, or you may not have that in your area, but if you are frustrated with lousy bag ties and with those cardboard ones that they come with now, at least where I live, if you are frustrated with that and tired of it, you gotta make some of these. You could make these, you could whip off a hundred of these in an hour. Well, okay, maybe not that many, but depends on how good you are. But you could definitely whip off a ton of these in an afternoon. Give them to your friends, give them to your family. Sell them at church bazaars, like three of them in a bag for $5. Guys, these things would sell. Stocking stuffers for your family members. Like, these things are fantastic. They are environmentally friendly, 100% reusable. You could even engrave on them. If you go the laser engraving uh, route, which, as I said, is my favorite route here just because of its speed and ease, you could very easily custom engrave them. Engrave them with their name on it. I know it's weird to have a bag tie with your name on it, but what the heck, why not? Customize these as much as you want. Put a finish on them if you want. They can go in the freezer. If they break or they get wet and destroyed, who cares? You know, it's crazy uh, that something so simple works so well. But you have to at least try it and at least make it in order for it to work. Now, I showed you guys about using natural wood or using solid stock, we'll call it. It doesn't work, guys. It just doesn't work. You could make it work if you made that stock a little thicker. Say instead of one eighth, you made it a quarter inch, but then you're getting into some pretty cumbersome ties and that creates other issues. But no matter what you do, no matter what you make it out of, you just gotta make it because this is a spectacular idea. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. This one has been, well, you know what? It's been fun. I know I, I say that for every show, but this has been fun. I get got to use a bunch of different methods and demonstrate how to make the same project in four different ways. For me, that's fun. I don't know about you, maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not gonna miss notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you found this useful and that you're gonna try this for yourself. I hope you were able to take something positive away from the show today. And more importantly, I hope you're gonna join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.